Thank you so much for your wonderful questions. I have more of your amazing questions to get into in just a moment. But what's been happening this week? Well, uh, last weekend I went and spoke at Tamsin Marie's amazing Love Writing Day of encouraging and inspiring writers. I was talking with Julie Cohen, who was the other speaker there, and we had a fantastic time. Great writers. So if I saw you on the Love Writing Day, hello, and thank you for watching my vlogs. I know that there's some new people tuning in this week who I spoke to at the weekend. Um, so what else has been happening? Well, I have had today a sneak peek of the page proofs for A Parcel for Anna Brown, and I'm not going to tell you why I'm excited, but there is a very special reason why I'm excited, and you are going to love it. It's just... It's something that you've never seen in my books before and I'm not going to say anything else but I'm very, very excited about it. So sorry to be a tease but that's what's happened today so I'm very, very excited about that. So on to your questions. My first question today is from the lovely Wendy Kerridge who's on Facebook. Hi Wendy. Wendy wants to know, would you ever consider a sequel to take a look at me now? Now the sequel question is something that I get asked all the time. And I actually take it as a real compliment because as a writer, if you've created a group of characters and a world that you've invited uh, your readers into and they want that world to carry on, which is kind of what you want with a sequel, then that is a really big compliment to me. That's worth more than, you know, prizes or Sunday Times bestseller status or all that kind of stuff that comes with being a writer that people sort of chase. I love the fact that people want a sequel. That said... I haven't read many sequels that I think have worked in the way that I want them to. So you, a lot of you will know that I'll Take New York is kind of an almost sequel to Fairy Tale. So there are questions that are answered in I'll Take New York that I've been asked over the years about people like Rosie and Ed. And also you got an insight into Harry from Welcome to My World because she was uh, she's at uh, and if you haven't read it, an important thing that happens in the book. I don't want to give that away if you haven't read Alter Take New York yet. Um, so I always, I never say never. I think if I can find an interesting story to tell, then yes, I think I would go back there. So anyway, hope that answers your question. Thank you very much for your question. My next question is from the very lovely Daniel Riding. Hi, Daniel. Uh, we chat on, on, on Twitter quite a lot, and Daniel's just started vlogging as well. I'll put a link on the uh, blog post that accompanies this vlog. Um, as well, we talk about herbal tea and knitting, which I think is, you know, it's very, it's quite civilised for me, really. So anyway, Daniel wanted to know, why did I change publishers? Now, this is a bit of a tricky one. Um, it's kind of like why you change jobs. Um, I think there's lots of, lots of reasons why. Um, it wasn't that I wasn't happy with my previous publisher. I, I loved Avon to bits, and Avon is still doing amazing things with my books. Um, so it was really a really difficult decision, but it kind of felt like the right decision for the next stage of my career. I, I've been with Avon for, uh, well, six years, but kind of, it was, it was seven years, six books. Um, and it sort of felt like a good time to sort of move on um, and with my new publisher with Pam Macmillan they just had a, a different uh, sort of idea of where I could go next which I think is a lot easier for someone new coming in to say well maybe as a writer you could go here here and here and it would kind of fit in with the sort of stories that I wanted to tell um, so that's why I changed publisher and also I was very fortunate that I could change publisher uh, it's the first time that I've been, it ended up being a three-way auction, so I kind of felt like I was on Homes Under the Hammer, only I was the house. So that all happened the week before Flo was born, so it was quite crazy. Um, but it's interesting for me as a writer, because I started out, you know, it was writing was, was a hobby. I never thought anyone would want to would wanna read what I'd written. Um, but suddenly it's become my career, and, and so it seemed really significant, actually, when I got to the end of my second three-book deal with Avon. It was kind of actually, you know, this is the first, the, going forward from here is where I, I, I am a full-time writer, which I wasn't for the first five years of my, of my writing career. Um, and it means that I can, I can kind of make a decision almost as a, you know, this is my career now, it's not just my hobby. And it, and it was actually lovely for me because I thought, wow, you know, like how far I've come from thinking that no one would ever read my books to suddenly being in a position where other publishers want to publish me. So 
I hope that answers your question. It was it was a difficult decision, but I feel like it's the right one, and we'll see because Parcel for Anna Brown comes out in September this year. I haven't got a date as yet. As soon as I've got a date, I'll let you know. Uh, the cover is almost there. I've seen a sneaky peek. It's amazing. Um, we're not saying anything else, but I'm very excited. So I hope that answers your question, Daniel. Thank you very much for your question, and I'll chat to you on Twitter soon. Uh, okay, so last question is from the very lovely Carla. Uh, who's Carlasm1533 on Twitter. Hi Carla, thank you very much for your question. She says, any tips on planning a novel and staying focused? Well, anyone who was at Tamsin Murray's Love Writing Day uh, at the weekend will know this was something that came up a lot about staying focused. And I think if you're a writer, if you're a creative person, it's really difficult to stay focused, particularly when it stops being your lovely sparkly idea and it gets about a third of the way in when suddenly you've actually got to put in the hard work. Um, planning a novel, I don't know, I, I find a different way to plan a novel every time. I'm finding that I'm being more, I'm planning more than I was initially. Um, some of that's to do with time restraint because I only have a very short amount of time to write the first draft of a novel because I, I publish a novel a year and it takes about seven months from start to finish, um, from writing the initial draft to actually going to print. Um, so, uh, yeah, planning. I think get to know your characters. I think that's really important. What I would say is there comes a point when you're planning so much that you haven't actually done any writing. And I would always say try out a few scenes quite early on. Get to know your characters, hang out with them, even if those scenes don't make it into the final book. Um, while you've got that enthusiasm and that, and that impetus that you have with a brand new sparkly idea, before, it, before you hit, for me, about 29,000 words, which is the first hurdle, because I, I, I write in roughly a three-act structure. Um, so, yeah, get to know your characters, actually write about them. Don't plan, don't plan to the point where you actually don't want to write the story because it's all in the plan. Um, staying focused. Keep telling yourself it's the story you want to tell. And I, I, I said this to the writers at the, at the Love Writing Day, and I'll say it to anybody, the most important two words that you will write in the first draft of anything is the end. Because a lot of people start a first draft and never get to the end of it because another idea comes up and is sparkly. And even if you're a published author, in fact, if you are a published author, it's worse. Because you've got the one that you've got to work on is kind of like the day job. It's, it's very strange that it, it becomes like that when you're a full time writer or even if you're a part-time writer as well and so all the sparkly ideas that don't have deadlines attached to them and aren't going to pay bills uh, suddenly become really attractive so I think the thing to stay focused is to keep telling yourself why you want to tell that story and that's one of the reasons why I come up with three keywords um, for, for my novels this is the new thing that I'm doing now so for each one of my novels I come up with three words that I want the reader to feel it's kind of like a, an emotion thing um, what, how I want them to feel when they're reading my book and so with keeping those three words whenever I get to another scene I have to make sure that that feeling is in there when I read it back so that's helped me to keep focused um, but you've got to try different tricks to find your way of bribing yourself to write the first draft um, but you've got to get to the end once you get to the end you not only understand what your book's about or what your story's about but you also know what you need to change and you know how the character's changed. Your understanding of your main character will always change by the time you get to the end of the novel. And when you go back and start reading the draft to start revising it, you will always find things that you go, oh, my character wouldn't do that. So that's, I think that's, that's probably my best answer is to bribe yourself to keep going. Plan it, but don't plan it to the point where you don't want to write the novel anymore. Uh, write scenes down while you're excited. And um, yeah, get to the end. When you get to the end, it's the biggest rush, I promise you. If you get to the end of a first draft, it is the biggest rush because you've completed a novel. Um, so I hope that helps. So there we go. That's it for this week. But I have more of your questions. Don't worry if I didn't answer your question this week. I have more coming soon. So if you've got a question, there's still room for more. All you have to do is put a comment underneath this blog post. You can tweet me at words. Smith. You can leave a comment on Facebook, I'm Miranda Dickinson author on Facebook, or you can email me mirandawordy at gmail.com. I think that's everything. Have a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye.